Hey boys and girls from 4th grade. My name is Tim. I have a question. Do you like science? No? You say? Well, what if I told you that today we're going to learn about how some of your body organ systems work? Would that change that no answer to a yes answer? By the way, my name is Sylvia. Well, I love science and would certainly like to hear more about those, Sylvia. All right. Tim, I would love to inform you and our fourth grade friends about some of our body systems and what they do for us. Okay. Couldn't wait to hear about all of these and what they do for us. So, Sylvia, what exactly is a body organ system? Great question, Tim. I'm sure that some of the boys and girls were wondering the same thing. There are seven organ systems that all work together and depend on each other in our bodies. Oh, tell me more. Okay. Well, that's why it's so important to be healthy and to take care of our bodies, as all of these organ systems depend on one another. By taking care of our bodies, do you mean to bathe daily, take care of our teeth, eat healthy, and drink lots of water? Yes, Tim, I do mean exactly that. I am sure you have heard that before boys and girls, and it's very important. So, our seven body systems are skeletal, muscular, respiratory, circulatory, digestive, nervous, and immune. Don't worry boys and girls, we will explain what these are and what they do for you. I have heard about some of those, but I am excited to hear what each one does for me and our fourth grade friends. So the first one is our skeletal system which supports our body. It's made of a tissue called bone. There are 206 bones in an adult body. Tim and fourth grade friends, did you know there are 300 bones in your body when you are born? Why are there only 206 bones as an adult? The answer will be given to you in a moment after we learn about the jobs of the skeletal system. The skeletal jobs are 1. Supporting your body, 2. Protecting your body and organs, 3. Helps you move, 4. Gives you shape, 5. Stores minerals, and 6. Produces blood cells. Oh yes, and there are two types of joints, correct? Yes Tim, I'll talk about that in a minute. First, I want to go back to the question I asked a minute ago. Do you know the answer to the question I gave about the baby having 300 bones when born and adults only have 206? I know the answer. It's because as you grow, the bones fuse together, right? Right. If you got the answer Tim did, give yourselves a pat on the back. Nice job. There are two types of joints. One is ball and socket joint, which are your shoulder and hip joints. The second is hinge and joint, which are in our arms and legs. This next organ system, I am going to talk about since I know a lot about it. All right, Tim, it's all you. This next system is the muscular system. Its jobs are to move your body, helps to move joints, and it contracts and releases to create movement. There are two types of muscles. One are the voluntary muscles and the other are involuntary muscles. Voluntary muscles are ones that you control. When you smile or frown, when you chew your food, when you run or walk are all examples. Most muscles are voluntary. Involuntary muscles are ones that you have no control over. Your body goes into autopilot. These happen naturally. Examples of these involuntary muscles my body and your body do include breathing, digesting food, keeping your blood flowing, and helping your eyes adjust to light. Anything you want to add, Sylvia? Yes, there is. Nice job, Tim. There are three types of muscle tissue. One, smooth, two, cardiac, and three, skeletal. The first is smooth muscle tissue. These are usually involved in involuntary motions. These muscles are found throughout the body. These muscles are found in the walls of blood vessels, urinary bladder, and the digestive system. The second is cardiac muscle. These are also involuntary and are found in your heart. The third are skeletal muscles, which are attached to your bones in the body. These muscles are voluntary or the ones that you move, as Tim told you. 
Now, on to the respiratory system. The respiratory system's job is to move oxygen into the body and take out carbon dioxide. This is breathing. While Sylvia tells you the process of breathing, I was going to draw you a diagram, but we have no chalk for the chalkboard. But, your teacher will draw or hand out a diagram showing you the flow of air. I'm sure their teacher appreciated that, Tim. The flow of air starts in the mouth. Then it goes to the pharynx or your throat. Next it goes to your trachea or windpipe. And then heads into the bronchial tubes leading to your lungs. Lastly, it goes into your lungs. Now that we know about our respiratory system, we are going to look at our circulatory system. The purpose or job of the circulatory system is to get oxygen from your lungs and pick it up and take it to your heart. In other words, it moves blood through your body. Right, Tim. And there are three parts to the circulatory system. One, the heart. Two, blood vessels. And three, blood. Thanks, Sylvia. Would you like to tell our friends about the heart? Again, I would draw this for you, but have no chalk. I sure would, Tim. There are four chambers in our hearts. The top chambers are referred to as atriums. You have a left and a right atrium. The bottom two chambers are referred to as ventricles. You have a left and right one as well. Let's look at what each chamber does for us. The left atrium, found in the top left of the heart collects blood from the lungs, which are full of oxygen. The left ventricle, found in the lower left of the heart pumps blood to the body. The right ventricle, found in the lower right of the heart pumps blood to the lungs, and the right atrium, found in the top right of the heart collects blood from the body full of carbon dioxide. So the atriums collect blood, and the ventricles disperse it throughout your body? That's right, Tim. The left side has the oxygen-filled blood your body needs. The right side gets the carbon dioxide-filled blood that is sent to your lungs, so that you can send the carbon dioxide that your body no longer wants back out into the air. This is some fascinating and awesome stuff. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about is... Ick, Tim. That's disgusting. Say, excuse me. That's so impolite and rude. Excuse me, sorry Sylvia and my fourth grade friends, guess I ate too much at lunch. Anyway, the next thing I want to tell you about is our digestive system. All food must be broken down into nutrients for our body. Digestion can be defined as the process that breaks down food into a form your cells can use. Let's take a look at the process. There are several parts of the process. 1. Teeth and saliva begin to break down food. 2. Food moves through the esophagus. 3. Food enters your stomach. Stomach muscles mash it with stomach juice until a thick liquid is formed. 4. Muscles push food to the small intestine. The food stays there for three to six hours. Your body absorbs the nutrients. 5. Anything not digested in the small intestine moves to the large intestine as waste. I couldn't have done that better myself. Well, maybe without the burp, but overall nice job, Tim. We have two more organ systems to talk about. You're doing a great job paying attention, fourth graders. The next process I'm going to tell you about is the central nervous system. Its job is the control center for our entire body. It has two parts. One part is the brain. The brain has millions of nerve cells. It is the main switch area. The second part is the spinal cord. This is the main communication path from your brain to the rest of your body. So what exactly does the central nervous system do for us, Sylvia? You sure do ask great questions, Tim. You must know what I am thinking. The central nervous system controls breathing, heart rate, movement of skeletal and smooth muscles, senses, processes outside information and sense responses. So, as you can see, it does a lot for us. Sometimes I hear people complain about pain, say from a broken bone, but without pain messages from our body to the brain, we could do more damage to ourselves. So it's a great safety feature, isn't it? Right, Tim. It sure is. Now we know six out of the seven processes, Sylvia. What is our last one we are going to share with the kids today? Right, Tim. I have left the immune system for last. 
I'll get to what the immune system is in a moment. There are a few things I have to tell you about first. Let's start with microorganisms. These can cause you to be sick if too many are in your body in the wrong place. Remember these things about microorganisms. 1. They do live in your body. 2. Some cause disease when they multiply and are not where they belong. 3. These can only be seen by a microscope. How does your body protect itself from bacteria or microorganisms, Sylvia? Glad you asked that, Tim. The body has skin, which is our coat of armor. It provides physical protection and the chemicals in your sweat kill bacteria. The breathing passages have mucus, which trap microorganisms. Your stomach helps too, the acid in it kills microorganisms. Tears wash away disease causing microorganisms in your mouth has mucus and saliva that trap and wash away microorganisms as well. So, your body does have a lot of defenses but these tiny microorganisms can usually still find a way to get in. I will tell you about preventing diseases soon. Wow. Our bodies do help a lot, but what is this immune system, what does it do for us? I was just getting to that Tim. Our immune system protects us from pathogens, which are bacteria and viruses. The immune system is made up of blood cells and other tissues. Blood cells fight off infections. Pathogens cause the immune system to work hard, which is why you will feel tired when you are sick. Viruses are smaller than bacteria. Your immune system creates antibodies, which is a chemical the body makes to stop pathogens. You can think of antibodies as your army to fight against foreign invaders. I become more and more amazed with all that our bodies do for us. I had no idea it did all of this. I know Tim, it is amazing to me too and I love sharing my knowledge with our fourth grade friends. Vaccines are something else I want to tell you about. This is a medicine that protects you from getting sick. A vaccine can be given more than once. This is called a booster shot, and it reminds the body how to fight a disease. I really don't like being sick. So what can I do to protect myself from infectious disease? Well Tim, antibodies in your body do fight infection. But, you can protect yourself by eating healthy, getting plenty of rest, exercising, washing your hands, and covering your mouth. I do a lot of that already. Thanks for teaching me about these organ systems I didn't know about Sylvia. You are welcome Tim and fourth graders. I hope you all realize how important it is to take care of yourselves so that you can keep everything working as it should be in your body. It's never too late to start, so if you haven't been doing a great job so far, start now. Join us next time for another lesson with Tim and I. Bye bye. Bye fourth grade friends. Sylvia and I will see you soon.